Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of the OWASP Top 10 training series. Today, we are going to practice many broken authentication and session management attack examples. We will practice on an authentication bypass attack example using forced browsing. We will exploit broken authentication using weak credentials. We will exploit a vulnerable password reset link. And finally, we will exploit broken authentication using a security question. If you don't know the theory behind this vulnerability, I highly recommend you read the blog post first. I will link it in the description box. First, we're going to launch our OWASP top 10 training box, the Debian VM, which we created earlier in the previous videos. If you haven't set it up yet, you can do that using our previous video. All right, now let's SSH to our box. We use docker ps command to verify that we have both containers running. In this example, the goal is to access the challenge board on OWASP Boost Shop, which is normally not meant to be public. Single page web applications typically use Ajax calls from a front end application. Therefore, all API endpoints should be included somewhere client side, like JavaScript files. So in this challenge, we are going to enumerate JavaScript files in order to find the scoreboard, which gives access to all the challenges. So right click and click on inspect then go to sources and find the main-es2015.js file. Then we're going to pretty print it and we're going to try to find the login endpoint. And we land on in the area where all the endpoints of the application are being defined. And one of those endpoints is simply score dashboard. So what we can do is just visit this URL and sure enough, you get access to the scoreboard. So this is an example of authentication bypass using forced browsing. Basically, all we had to do is enumerate the endpoint. And since the backend doesn't perform authentication verification on that endpoint, we were able to access the scoreboard. Because Burp Suite Community Edition allows only throttle brute force, we are going to use OWASP Zap for this challenge. It is also a great opportunity to learn how to use OWASP Zap in such use case. Now, let's try to log in as the admin user on OWASP Juice Shop. From our previous SQL injection tutorial, we know that the admin's email is admin at Juice Shop. So first make sure that you have OWASP Zap properly configured and running. We already covered that in previous video. Make sure you capture the requests using Zap Proxy and then hit login. And you can see that we have the HTTP request captured on OWASP Zap. You can see that we have a POST request which returns a 401, which means that it's an unauthorized request. And this means that our password is not valid. Right click on the request and choose fuzz and then highlight the pass password that we used. And then we're going to substitute it with the list of passwords. So we're going to choose the strings type and copy paste the list of the worst passwords of 2017 using the Seclist's GitHub project. And hit add then OK, and then click on Start Fuzzer button. You can see right away that we have a new tab called Fuzzer, and our requests are being sent one per password. By the end of the attack, we can sort by the response code, and sure enough, we get a 200 OK response when we send admin123. Now let's try to log in using the admin password, and sure enough, we get access to the admin account. In this challenge, the goal is to hijack Tom's password reset link and take over his account on OWASP WebGoat. First, make sure that you have OWASP WebGoat and WebWolf up and running. If you don't have them, please check out our video which covers that. And go to Broken Authentication menu and choose Password Reset. And then we're going to choose the sixth challenge. Here we have the task to reset Tom's password. 
we have a forgot password feature which allows us to send a password reset token to the email that we enter. So let's try first with our email. So since our username is webgoat, we use webgoat at webgoatcloud.org. Hit continue and we receive a response saying that an email has been sent to webgoat at webgoat-cloud.org. Now let's go to webwolf and see the incoming box if we receive this email. Webwolf is running on port 9090 and the login credentials are the same as the one you used on webgoat. All right, on the mailbox tab, you can see that we indeed have received a reset link. We will come to this later. Let's try to reset Tom's password using Tom email. And it says that an email has been sent to Tom. So let's capture this request and see how it is done. We're going to use Zap proxy, choose the history tab and find the post request, which is responsible for sending the email. You can see that it's forgot password slash create password reset link. And you can see that the parameter is email which contains the Tom's email. So a common flaw in this scenario is that developers rely on user input, such as the host header, to send the password reset link. We're going to construct a curl command, which would allow us to tamper with the host header. For that, we're going to note our cookie, which is in this case, J session ID. So curl dash B to specify the cookie. And then we're going to use the data option where we can include our post data from the request that we captured on Zap. And then we're going to poison the HTTP host header and include our malicious server, which listens to incoming requests, which is in this case, our WebWolf instance. In order for WebWolf to capture our request, it is mentioned that we need to construct a URL which looks like webwolf slash landing. We know that webwolf is running on our IP address column 9090. So all we have to do is add slash landing at the end and we can choose our endpoint that we want like evil in this example. And then we provide the full URL to the endpoint which is responsible for creating password links. Oops, I have an error. I just have to remove the equal in the data option. Now let's verify on WebWolf if we have received the password reset link. And voila, you notice that we have a password reset link which contains the password reset token. Let's copy this out and see if we can construct our valid password reset link. Now recalling the first part of the challenge, we received a password reset link for our own username. We're going to use that to see how to structure the password reset link. So you can see that the password reset token is appended at the end. So all we have to do is copy the first part of the URL and construct our password reset link. And we land on the reset password form or Tom's user. Let's create a dummy password and use it to log in as Tom. All right, we have successfully taken over Tom's account. You might think that security questions are secret, but it's not quite the case. With the amount of personal data people share on social media nowadays, security answers can be found relatively easy. In this challenge, we're going to reset our victim's password and access his account using a security answer he publicly shared. So let's go to the scoreboard and show all the challenges that we have. Let's find our challenge. And it says here that it's about our victim's favorite pet. Let's Google that and see if we have any publicly available information. It seems that there is a YouTube video about it. Okay, here's our victim, the author of OWASP Juice Shop. Around four minutes and a half, he starts filling up his user account and the application asks for a security question. Okay, secret question. Okay, what do we pick? Name of your favorite pet. Okay, we have a, we have a very sweet family cat, which has only three legs. She's 
totally adorable. So I just take her name because it's a perfectly safe answer to the security question, I guess. All right, it looks like Zaya is the name of the pet. So let's go ahead and take over his account using the password reset feature, which asks for a security question. So we know from the video that the name, the email is Bjorn at OASP.org and the security answer is Zaya. And all we have to do is create a new password. Okay, now we successfully solved the challenge. Let's go ahead and log in with that user. Bjorn at OASP.org and our newly created password. Great, we successfully taken over Bjorn's account. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you have not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and enable notifications so that you know when a new video is up.